Hey everybody, Real Estate Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. I want to do a video that's a little different. It's not news related. It's based off of a request for a consulting job that I had to turn down because quite frankly, I, I don't consult anymore. I used to do a lot of consulting of people with uh, higher net uh, worths and uh, that own businesses. I would go into their businesses and uh, show them things that they could do to tweak a little bit. And it was a great job. For years, I went around talking with business owners and trying to become a consultant. And it, it really started to take off when obviously the social media started. And uh, I saw a request come through uh, that I had to turn down. But you know what? I said, you know what? I'm gonna make a video about this because it's a very good idea. I got the person's uh, uh, permission to do this and just sort of a scenario that he's running through, right? We're going to set business aside and talk about just sort of personal finances. And uh, it's somebody that's waiting for this real estate crash. All right. So here it is. Uh, this gentleman, and I want to leave his name out of it, is 56 years old and single, uh, no real estate. And, and, and it sounds funny. Uh, the reason why uh, it's good to state if you're single or married or in a relationship, because that actually changes the dynamic of your business, your company, your personal finances, your goal setting, and all that kind of things. Uh, it is absolutely night and day difference, right? And, uh, and so I think it's really important. I think it's really great that he actually put this in there. Um, no real estate uh, currently. Three valuable collector cars with $750,000 in the bank. Renting a home slash shop currently, waiting for the right time to buy. Very confused about the economy and scared to make any moves. Uh, he's been collecting, he's been storing up some food and things like that. Uh, because he knows that times are getting hard, inflation's getting worse, and there might be actual food shortages. So that's really good too. And he said, what, what do you think I should do right now? And... And so again, guys, I don't give financial advice. I give life advice a lot when I do my consult, when I used to do consulting for businesses, because it's really about, I want to know uh, the business owner, right? What their, uh, how they live their life, what's important to them and uh, where they want to go in the future. Right. And then we can tailor the company that direction. Well, this is a real estate question because he wants to take advantage of this real estate crash and doesn't know what to do. So first off, I would tell this gentleman, congratulations on having $750,000 in the bank. You are absolutely crushing it. The, uh, the amount of people that have that kind of money in the bank, very few and far between, all right? Here's the problem that I tell people a lot and they don't see it. They go, I want, I want to take advantage of something right now uh, or in the future, right? Like a real estate crash. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And what they don't realize is the money that they're throwing away right now. Now, uh, everybody has to live somebody somewhere, right? And you have to pay rent. And right now, rent is quite exorbitant. It's massive, right? Rent uh, increases. It's just like they don't seem to see an end in rising, but they are actually slowing right now because what's happened is rent has risen so high uh, people just simply can't pay that anymore, right? Especially as unemployment's gonna start to tick up soon. Uh, but people are literally holding on, waiting for that correction with all this money, and the problem is their, their dollars are losing value. And they don't realize that they, you lose money every time you give somebody else rent, right? So what I tell a lot of people is, uh, and I've, I've seen this before, I go, you are held back from retirement because you have a house payment. And you got to keep making more money to keep that house payment where if you were to sell your 401k, wherever it is, and you could pay it off. I've asked people, I'm like, can you pay off your house if you uh, liquidated part of your 401k? They go, yeah. I said, well, think about it this way. You're literally going to be putting money in your pocket when you own your house. You're going to be the, the principal and the interest that you're paying right now towards the bank. That would be going in your pocket. And in many times, uh, this one consulting job I did just about, oh gosh, it was about eight months ago back, I showed this person that they would be saving 7%. It's literally like, because they don't have a house payment, that principal and interest going in their pocket equated to a 7% return in a year. And I said, that's guaranteed return, guaranteed. Now true, you're always gonna have to pay your taxes and your insurance, right? That's not gonna go away. But that's 7%, I'm like, where are you, where are you making 7% or more guaranteed? in the market. And the gentleman told me, I'm not. I said, well, then that's what you should do. Right. And in this gentleman's uh, situation, how much would it cost to buy a condominium cash right now, cash to where you are literally now putting money in your pocket because you're saving right now, the value of that property will go down as interest rates go up, mortgage rates go up because that has to find that median, that balance between payments, right? 
the, your, your payment and the value of the house because people can only pay so much towards a payment, right? 90% or something like that of real estate is valued based off of people, what they could pay each month. That's what values real estate. People don't get that. And the two big swings in that, two big factors are how much is the uh, asking price of the house or the sales price of the house compared to how much the mortgage interest is, right? How much is that payment going to be, right? And that is how, how uh, real estate finds its balance, its equilibrium. That's, it's, it's, that's how you figure out the ebbs and flows of real estate because you could sit there and go, well, right now, this, you know, let's say my county, the average income is $100,000, right? So we know that they take home X, right? So that means they can put up to two thirds of their take home pay. And that's when you know real estate's getting tight and it's at the top. They can put up to two thirds of their take home pay into a mortgage because the other third has to go for, you know, vehicle expenses, electricity, and food, right? And having fun. But usually a mortgage sits anywhere between one third of your take home pay and two thirds, right? That's how you can value real estate. And you have these other factors, the interest rate, the mortgage interest rate, the cost of the house. And that's how real estate goes up and down. And you could figure that out actually pretty easy after time. And that's how you value real estate. To this gentleman that has $750,000 in the bank is getting ready. Could you find a condominium for three? And now you're, or someplace, someplace. I mean, you're, if you're living in a shop right now, that means you're willing to sacrifice. What about if you could buy a shop to live in or buy a condominium or something, right? To where that money is now literally putting money in your pocket because you're not paying a landlord and then take the, the what's left, wait for the crash and then go crush it. I hope you guys got something out of this because I saw this and I go, it's a very interesting story. Very few people have that much money stored up, you know, and all they see are, and that's another thing too, what I asked in, uh, a lot of my consulting uh, jobs were, do you have the ability to relocate? Because we can find all kinds of avenues of making money because you're saving money if you relocate. That's another thing too, that people need to be thinking about. And we've seen that already in California where real estate sales were, companies put their, or people put their houses on the market simply to go leave to another state where it was cheaper to live, right? and they're saving money. And I think that's important. So guys, I hope you got something out of this. And just so you know, this is a new channel. If you're finding this video, it's on the Real Estate Ninja channel. Do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up button. Helps me get this channel going and it's a good backup channel. Guys, I hope you got something out of this. I wanna thank the gentleman for uh, emailing me this and giving me some information that I could share with you. Just some ideas to get your thought, the thought process moving, get the creative juices flowing. All right, guys, that being said, the Real Estate Ninja is out.